kids right now, especially Gen Alpha kids, which are kids under the age of 10, they see gender very differently. They experience gender very differently. It's a perfect time to introduce this new doll line that is truly gender neutral. Introducing Creatable World, a doll line designed to keep labels out and invite everyone in. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. So to summarize the updates that we went over in the last video, you got to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for a chance to win an exact copy of the iconic Heck Off, Kami laptop. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because YouTube has been trying to censor conservative channels so that they can't, quote, influence the 2020 election. Also, go to the video that I just did on climate activists and leave your questions in the comments for the Q&A slash Epic Minecraft Let's Play, which drops on October 10th, and there'll be a link to that in the description. And lastly, the Heck Off, Kami merchandise and website goes live on October 10th as well. So be sure to get the merch before it's sold out. And again, all of this is explained in greater detail in the climate activist video and the link to that will be in the description. So now, as you saw in the video from Time Magazine, we've got toy companies promoting and normalizing gender dysphoria to our children. And I know it may seem like fun and games, they've got funky and colorful outfits and they're just dolls, but no, what you saw is actually evil. Because if you are condoning the normalization of this to our children to any degree, you are evil and you should be put in jail. And I mean that wholeheartedly. And we'll get into the data behind it. But I first want to take a second to address our friends in the audience who have abandoned this idea of social conservatism. We see this a lot in young people, this notion of, well, I'm fiscally conservative but socially liberal. I don't really care what you do so long as you don't raise my taxes and allow me to present you with the train of thought that I had which compelled me to break out of that type of thinking. If you're a conservative in the traditional sense, you have to be conserving something. And because it's a term that has to be interpreted within a specific context, and because we're interpreting it within the American context, because we're conservatives in America, that means that we're trying to conserve the American way of life, which includes that men are men and women are women. But more importantly, your point of defense is basically lost. Because if you're a fiscal conservative but a social liberal and you're like, oh, well, I'm not really too concerned with this. People can do what they want to do. Well, in case you haven't noticed, what they want to do is promote and normalize delusion in society. They are trying to redefine the most obvious and undeniable truth of humanity, which is that there are men and there are women and the two are different. And you don't get to choose which one you are. And understand that once they can convince the culture that men can be women, women can be men, gender is just socially constructed. Once they can achieve that, they can achieve anything. If they can convince the society that gender as we know it and as we've always known it is incorrect, do you really think that society will at that point still be reasonable enough to hear you recite your favorite free to choose argument in favor of low taxes? Like, hey, I know that men and women don't exist and everyone gets to decide their own gender every day of the week, but if your problem is with the tax shelter industry, why are you against the idea of a flat tax? You come home from work, your kids greet you at the door, daddy, no, not even daddy, it's just like, parent, 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 it's time for my hormones. And you're like, it sure is, pumpkin, you know, the kid's Line up, they're all transitioning. You just give them puberty blocking hormones because they all decided that they were the opposite gender when they were like five. So you give them the hormones, you're whistling while you do it, and you overhear on the news just the president signed into law a new tax code which raises the average American's federal income tax by 2.7%. And you just say to yourself, like, my goodness, what has this country come to? Are you telling me that how much money you have is more important than your children and then the other children of this country? Let's face it, the tax battle is basically beating a dead horse at this point. That's not where the battle is being fought right now. I'm sorry. The battle is being fought at the idea of gender identity because you have leftists in your children's schools telling them that they should question their gender identity. You have to understand that conservatism is inherently a defensive ideology. We are trying to conserve. And if you fail to actually conserve, the machine of leftism will mow down whatever pasture you've left unmanned. In this case, that would be gender since everyone's apparently more concerned with how much money old Uncle Sam has taken out of my paycheck. And that's the problem, because people are going to be like, oh, John hates transgenders. John hates gender non-conforming people. No, incorrect. What I hate, what I abhor is that there are people out there who try to find meaning in their lives through indoctrinating our children into believing this delusion that a man isn't really a man, that a woman isn't really a woman, and that they exist to do that. So understand that this notion people have of like, oh, well, it doesn't affect me, so why should it matter? Well, it matters because it affects our children. It matters because they're trying to normalize it to our kids. Do you understand how young and naive kids are? They've been here for like five years. They don't know anything. They just learned about gender like three weeks ago. Now they're being told, by the way, you can decide your gender. They're like, 
Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that before. Wow, now I do. Learning things is pretty neat, huh? Do you know how damaging it is to prematurely sexualize a child? Do you have any idea? You've got increased likelihood of casual or unprotected sex, increased likelihood of drug and alcohol abuse, increased likelihood of becoming a victim of sexual violence, increased likelihood of anxiety, depression, problems with future relationships, including marriage. And that's what this does. Even something as simple as these dolls, because gender is inherently sexual. What is the fundamental difference between men and women? The difference is pertaining to their capacity for reproduction. And because of that, even introducing into the conversation these ideas that, well, gender's fluid. That opens the door for these children to be presented with things that they don't need to be presented with. Like Drag Queen Story Hour, where your young children can go watch grown men dressed up like bimbos twerk, and you're just there in the audience just taking pictures for Facebook so your coworkers can give you feedback on how tolerant and woke you are. What does that do? It prematurely sexualizes children. You've got a culture that embraces and celebrates pornography, both hardcore and softcore. I mean, little Timmy can't even go get a Twix bar in the checkout line without seeing a Kardashian Ashen, mostly naked on the front of a magazine. We've got the average age that a child is exposed to hardcore pornography being 11, 11 years old. And now we've got a cultural narrative that serves to promote gender dysphoria to our children to convince them that before they're even tall enough to ride most roller coasters, that you get to decide your gender. And you think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden we have a rise in gender dysphoria. A coincidence that now 27% of adolescents in California identify as gender nonconforming. It's not. This is an awful thing to be doing to our kids. And they maintain that, well, we're not really doing anything to the kids. We're just creating an open and more accepting environment for people who have really always been this way. But now, since society's more accepting, they're comfortable with expressing that. Maybe, maybe. We've seen the rates of LGBT people in America increasing every year, but interestingly enough, the only statistically significant increase is coming from the younger generations. The younger generations that, frankly, never really lived in a version of America that they would perceive to be unaccepting. The reality of the situation is that if the society were becoming more accepting, prompting long closeted members of the LGBT community to finally be able to express themselves, you'd see the trend be about the same for all age groups, but it isn't. The increase in LGBT Americans is being caused almost exclusively by the younger generations. And also on that, note, if you're going to make the argument that America's rate of LGBT people is increasing because we've become more accepting as a society, you cannot also make the argument that LGBT people are oppressed in this country. That is intellectually dishonest, my guy. And the true agenda here is, of course, to just redefine objectivity and to redefine truth. Because again, if they can redefine gender and if they can convince you to buy into it, they can convince you to buy into anything. And the great strategy that they have by which they can demonize any opposition to this is to claim that being transgender or having any other gender identity than what you were assigned at birth, which is a mental disorder, by the way, according to the DSM, uh, that is caused genetically. The reason people have gender identity disorder, the reason people have gender dysphoria, it's because of genetics. They were born like that. And so the best thing that we can do is to help them and to support them and give them access to hormones at whatever age they request them. Why might they want to claim that it's a genetic condition? Very simple. If it's a genetic condition, then to speak out against it would be wrong. If people are truly born that way with gender identity disorder, gender dysphoria, whatever, we wouldn't be able to justify criticizing the normalization of this disorder. And that's why anyone that speaks out against this is a transphobe. Well, you disagree with any aspect of this and you're transphobic. And the thing about it, is that we know that it isn't a genetic condition. Virtually everything about human beings is influenced by our DNA, but very few traits are hardwired from birth. All human behavior manifests because of varying degrees of nature and nurture or biological factors versus non-biological factors. And the best way to determine the degree to which those disorders are caused by biological factors would be to look at twins because twins have virtually identical genetics and they're exposed to the same hormones during pregnancy. So if genes and or prenatal hormones contributed significantly to transgenderism, we should expect both twins to identify as transgender gender close to 100% of the time. But in the largest twin study of transgender adults published by Dr. Milton Diamond in 2013, only 28% of the identical twins both identified as transgender. 72% of the time they differed. That 28% of identical twins both identifying as transgender suggests a minimal biological predisposition, which means transgenderism will not manifest itself without outside non-biological factors also impacting the individual during his or her lifetime. The fact that the identical twins differed 72% of the time is significant because it means that at least 72% of what contributes to transgenderism in one twin consists of non-shared experiences after birth or factors not rooted in biology. And studies such as this prove that the idea of a man's brain trapped in a woman's body or vice versa is a total myth with no basis in science. And to be fair, you can easily find studies that claim to prove that such a myth is true, but just take five minutes and thumb through the methodology because it's quite easy to spot bad data when you do that, which virtually all of it is. But 
You know, what's the harm? So what if we're nurturing generations of children into being confused about their gender identity? Well, there's actually quite a bit of harm, my friend, which is why I'm concerned about this in the first place. You know, if our kids weren't being indoctrinated into questioning their gender identity right after they learned how to read, I wouldn't lose a ton of sleep over it, to be honest with you. But even the American Psychological Association's Handbook of Sexuality and Psychology admits that prior to the widespread promotion of transition affirmation, 75 to 95 percent of prepubertal children who were distressed by their biological sex eventually outgrew that distress. The vast majority came to accept their biological sex by late adolescence after passing naturally through puberty. That's a huge number. But that was that was back in the back in the olden days of like 10 years ago. So what are we doing now? Well, we're giving these kids puberty blocking hormones because obviously if your five year old son decides that he's a girl, you want to get him nice and pumped up with hormones so that he never experiences puberty because how uncomfortable would that be if your five year old son ended up having a lower voice? Forget that your five year old son has a dick. The biggest obstacle to him truly feeling comfortable in his identity as a girl is the fact that his voice is going to drop. So you better get him some hormones and are the hormones safe? No. In fact, the FDA just released data that shows about 26,000 serious adverse reactions from taking one of the most popular hormone blockers and about 6,400 deaths between 2014 and 2019. Hey, remember when Trump was going to ban vape because like six people died or something? Maybe he should look into banning this type of treatment being given to kids who haven't been diagnosed with precocious puberty, which is what it was intended for because kids with this condition began secreting pubertal hormones at an unhealthy level too early in their development. Yeah, really makes you think, huh? Maybe if 75 to 95% of prepubertal children will outgrow their gender confusion, maybe we shouldn't be pumping them with dangerous drugs that try to eliminate the possibility of them outgrowing their delusion. And this brings us to the final question, what's wrong with being transgender? What's wrong with not identifying within the traditional male-female binary? And the answer to that question is nothing. Other than the fact that your identity is a symptom of delusion, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I really couldn't care less about it, to be honest with you. And I truly wish you the best of luck with your condition. And I mean that because these people are suffering and it's wrong for us to make fun of them. It's wrong for us to ridicule them because these people are truly not mentally well. And acknowledging that what they're going through is a mental disorder is not to insult them. It's just to recognize the reality of their condition and try to support them. But the way to support them is not to pretend that what they're going through is normal. And it's certainly not to promote this disorder to our children. Those children, who then go on puberty blockers, and there's evidence to suggest that going on puberty blockers then inevitably causes them to decide to take cross-sex hormones to help them feel closer to their identity, whereas had they not taken those puberty blockers, they would have grown out of it in almost all cases. And what happens when you take puberty blockers as a child and then take cross-sex hormones? You become sterilized. That's a significant consequence. And because the consequence is significant, there's an element of risk to undergoing this process. And because of that, we have to ask ourselves, do children have the necessary capacity for risk assessment? And the answer to that question is no. Children are not cognitively developed enough to assess risks. Not only will any neuroscientist tell you that, any parent will tell you that. The problem is that to ask that question, even though it serves to question what is best for the child, that's inherently an obstacle to the agenda. And because of that, it's offensive and you can't say it. How dare you question my eight-year-old's gender identity? How dare you tell my eight-year-old that you know their gender identity better than they? Well, I dare because I can look at them and tell which gender they are. And I dare because we know that the suicide rate amongst transgender people is extremely, extremely high. And the reason for that is not because they're ostracized by society. It's because they're mentally ill. The attempted suicide rate for transgender people who have stated that being transgender has had quote no negative impact on their quality of life is about one in three and based on the 2017 national survey of drug use and mental health it's estimated that about 0.6 percent of adults in this country have made at least one suicide attempt that's 31 percent versus 0.6 percent and they said it's not because they're transgender or gender non-conforming if it was because they were being ostracized by society they would have said that it's negatively impacted their quality of life and granted the ones that stated it did have a negative impact on their quality of life were more likely to attempt suicide. But that doesn't prove anything because obviously anyone that believes their quality of life is made worse by something is going to be more likely to attempt suicide. What matters is that we have the variables isolated. We know that transgender and gender non-conforming people who say their attempted suicide rate has nothing to do with how being transgender has affected their quality of life one in three. The national average is about one in 200. One in three versus one in 200. Do you see the problem? 
And we also know that the methods for treating this condition, which are methods that seek to treat it as if it's not a psychological condition, but rather an endocrine related condition with your hormones and such, methods such as hormone therapy, genital surgery, breast removal, et cetera, you know, all that fun stuff. All of this has shown no reduction in the likelihood that they attempt suicide. In fact, it typically even increases the likelihood that they attempt suicide. So from this information, we know two things. Firstly, the reason that they're committing suicide is not because of how society treats them. And secondly, the way to prevent them from committing suicide is not to provide them with hormones and surgeries. And in fact, that's actually been shown to increase their likelihood of suicide. We already know that over 90% of people who commit suicide have a diagnosed mental disorder. There's no evidence that gender dysphoric children who commit suicide are any different. Many gender dysphoric children simply just need therapy to get to the root of their depression, which very well may be the same problem triggering the gender dysphoria. It would seem that gender dysphoria is actually a symptom of depression, anxiety, and an unstable self-image rather than the other way around. And guess what happens that causes things like depression, anxiety, and an unstable self-image? Prematurely sexualizing children! And so, as you can see, it's all come full circle, Frodo has returned to the Shire, and normalized and promoting transgenderism to children is nothing short of child abuse and it should be treated as such by everyone regardless of how intolerant that makes us yeah i don't think i'm ready to apologize for the intolerance of not wanting to give my kid drugs to stop him from going through puberty so that he's cemented in the state of mind that gives him a one in three chance of attempting suicide because he told me that he thinks he's a girl when he was like seven that that's a no from me and if it's a yes from you you're a child abuser plain and simple what are we thinking? This video? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I'll tell you what, this video, thumbs up. Normalizing transgenderism to indoctrinate the youth, thumbs down, to be honest. I think we covered that pretty extensively. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also subscribe, turn on notifications, and thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. Ka-chow!